Raptor 2 has significant improvements in every way, but a complete design overhaul is necessary for the engine that can actually make life multiplanetary. It won't be called Raptor. Remember when SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk declared this two years ago? At that time, the space community eagerly awaited that next generation engine for the Starship. But things gradually blurred over the years. It was not until recently that Walter Isaacson's biography of Elon Musk surprisingly revealed that SpaceX had critical breakthroughs beyond the SpaceX Raptor. And why is SpaceX's latest Raptor engine being viewed as a game changer in space exploration? Join us on this cosmic journey as we take a sneak peek into the insane engineering of SpaceX's Raptor engine. So how powerful is this breakthrough and what is it exactly? Also what happened to it? Let's find out in today's episode of Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St it can't be denied that Musk is one of the most influential figures of our time. The founder and CEO of SpaceX not only leads the most revolutionary and active spaceflight company on the planet, but is also at the helm of the industry-leading electric car maker, Tesla. Not to mention, he recently became the CEO of Twitter which has now been rebranded to X.com. Biographer and journalist Walter Isaacson spent two years with Musk in order to write Elon Musk, a new best-selling biography that explores what makes the entrepreneur and innovator tick. A notable section of the book is about the Raptor engine that would power Starship. Fueled by supercooled liquid methane and liquid oxygen, it had more than twice the thrust of the Falcon 9's Merlin engine. This meant that Starship would have more thrust than any other rocket in history. But the Raptor engine would not get humanity to Mars simply by being powerful. It would have to also be manufactured in fleets, in which the smallest amount is at least 40 Starships. However, the Raptor was too complex to be mass-produced. In fact, the insides looks like homemade spaghetti, and not the tasty kite either. So in August of 2021, Musk fired the person in charge of its design and personally took on the title of vice president for propulsion. His goal was to get the cost of each engine to around $200,000, a tenth of what it then cost. SpaceX's Leet Leet was probably born from there with the purpose of being better and cheaper than the Raptor. Musk and SpaceX were looking at extreme ideas like deleting the whole hot fuel gas manifold and merging the fuel pump with the main chamber injector. Musk told his team that, we are on a deletion rampage. All questionable tubes, sensors, and manifolds were deleted. Musk also has looked at removing the entire skirt of the booster. The performance of the SpaceX Raptor engine is already very good. But, Leet Leet will have even higher chamber pressure which will enable more thrust. The SpaceX Leet Leet engines will be simpler, lighter, and cheaper. SpaceX will likely be able to build them at 10 times the production volume from the same sized factory that will now make 4,000 Raptor engines each year. Just so you know, the second stage of Starship has six engines. But Musk has said they will add three engines to get to nine for the upper stage. Raptor Starships may have an additional three Raptor vacuum engines for increased payload capacity. If SpaceX's Raptor engines currently cost a million dollars each, there are nine engines for a Starship and having a Starship at double the cost of the engines means a complete. Starship costs $18 million. If SpaceX's lead engine costs $200,000 each, then nine engines on a Starship could reduce the price of a complete Starship to $3.6 million. But if the SpaceX lead engine costs $100,000 each, then that's only $1.8 million. These are unprecedented numbers in the rocket industry. But however, sadly, per a recent interview with Walter, the Leet Leet was scrapped. But some of what they learned was applied to Raptor 2. And so far, we have Raptor version 3. According to Musk, the Raptor 3 can achieve 350 bar chamber pressure, or 269 tons of thrust and the engine might have entered volume production since the test that generated this thrust that took place in May. Starship Super Heavy Booster has 33 Raptors, so total thrust of 8,877 tons, or 19.5 million pounds, he said on May 13th. 
Starship is destined to be the world's most powerful rocket in history. Musk also added, if we can delete and integrate enough secondary structure, small fiddly bits, then we can locally protect the rest and delete engine heat shields, he wrote. Deleting some components would decrease the engine's mass and make the engine more compact and faster to manufacture at scale compared to the previous versions. Let's first look at the cosmic waiting room where Ship 25 and Booster 7 are on standby, their fate in the hands of the FAA. Booster 9, feeling a bit restless, decided to jazz up the scene by giving its four grid fins a playful wave, because even rockets get bored waiting for the green light. The grid fins of Booster 9 are the ASUP SpaceX's sleeve, proving that sometimes the devil is in the details. These grid fins are fixed in place and painstakingly constructed from welded steel, in contrast to the deployable cast titanium fins of the Falcon family. Their unwavering structure highlights their significance as essential components of rockets, landing at an astonishing 16 feet tall and 8 feet wide. These substantial steel grid fins, which defy folding, are crucial in demonstrating how enormously important they are. Relying solely on the reaction control system for orientation adjustments and vehicle stabilization during all descent phases becomes problematic. This is especially true in the age of reusable rockets like the Falcon 9 and Starship. Due to the quick and occasionally dangerous changes in airspeed and density, these imposing grid fins actively provide the required stability. What is more impressive is that it's not just about how well they work. It's also about the significant obstacles that these fins overcome. They're not just pulling their weight. They're carrying the weight of the cosmos on their sturdy shoulders. By choosing RCS as the sole attitude control mechanism, the rocket would have to use more working fluid, thus making the booster heavier. Contrarily, the grid fins provide a groundbreaking approach to stability. They highlight the impact of these likely simple parts in the overall scheme of rocket engineering. In aerospace vehicles, aerodynamic control surfaces with low hinge moments are crucial. These surfaces must also be efficient over a wide range of Mach numbers, from supersonic to subsonic. What is the optimal choice in this scenario? Enter grid fins, occasionally referred to as lattice wings or lattice controls. These small, non-traditional aerodynamic control surfaces are made up of a number of components that are tightly bound together by a single structure. Each component has a constant cord, a generally high aspect ratio, and a rectangular wing appearance. Looking at the many benefits of the grid fins, they provide excellent aerodynamic efficiency and low weight and volume. Grid fins have modest hinge moments and offer customizable aerodynamic properties over a broad range of Mach numbers and deflection angles. Additionally, they provide increased yaw stability at high incidence angles and improved roll stability. These moments only slightly change the center of pressure, necessitating less torque and lighter machinery for actuation. Missiles are easier to store or transport due to their small size and capacity to fold down to the fuselage. Notably, not only do the Starship grid fins constantly reuse the booster, but they also use Mechazilla to securely and precisely collect it. Among these notable advantages, what stands out as the primary drawback? The multi-plane structure, which results in very high wave drag and inadequate stability and effectiveness at transonic speeds, is a significant disadvantage. How did SpaceX address intricate challenges in aerodynamics and achieve breakthroughs in rocket engineering? SpaceX addressed these problems by increasing the necessary Mach number. This adjustment aimed to offset the stronger bow shock upstream, as well as mitigate the interference of shock cones from individual members. The same result was also achieved by causing a sweep in each individual member. This adjustment lessened the bow shock wave's intensity and improved transonic behavior. Wave drag can be effectively reduced for flat grid fins by reducing the leading edge bluntness of individual members and the total surface thickness. Members or parts can have a variety of profiles, just like a chameleon changing colors. From classic wedges and double wedges to the more intricate hexagonal airfoils, each profile plays its part in minimizing drag and maximizing efficiency. However, the challenge is that using these profiles can become less prevalent as production costs increase. Two strap-down Raptor engine bells, R14 and R136, 
appeared at the construction site, creating an unusual sight back at Starbase. Were these standard Raptor engines? Nope, they were combustion chambers and nozzles, suggesting a potential advancement in the next generation. The high base saw the lifting and hanging of Ship 31. Now it's a part of the magnificent lineup of completely stacked starships at Starbase, even though SpaceX's precise plans are still unknown. In the middle of this, cryogenic proof testing for Ship 29 and Booster 10 was successfully completed. This paved the way for engine installation and further improvements in their testing phases. Ship 24.2 was sailed into Massey's, gearing up for imminent testing, further enhancing the dynamic environment of continuing Starship advances. Now, putting Starship on hold for the time being, SpaceX has formally finished the third quarter with a remarkable 70 flights for the year. This achievement surpasses the company's previous high of 61 launches established in 2022. SpaceX has accomplished 26 launches since the start of the run in 2020. The business has outperformed its year-to-date record from the previous year. This impressive streak has now been extended for the fourth straight year, firmly placing SpaceX in the winter circle of space exploration. Details about the project are as vague as shadows, leaving much to the imagination. Are you thrilled about the groundbreaking Raptor engine development? Well, is Elon Musk content with Starship's current power level? He's proving that the sky is not the limit, it's just the beginning. If you like this video make sure to give a thumbs up, and subscribe see you in the next video thanks for watching. By, By the way, way are you familiar with Talk Talk, Talk Philippines, Philippines app? Talk Talk, Talk is, is a delivery service, service app designed, designed to connect more people, people by delivering items door to door. door. For, For more, more information, information download, download the Talk Talk, Talk app here, here down, down below. below.